How's it going? Matt Prem here from DuckTerritory.com and uh, some breaking news late Friday evening, April 23rd with the Oregon men's basketball program. And that comes with the verbal commitment of a transfer in the basketball portal from Oklahoma's Devion Harmon, a six foot two point guard for the Sooners. He entered the transfer portal as well as declaring for uh, the NBA draft. So this is going to be a guy who's going through the NBA draft process. Uh, he has said that he's kind of up and down on what he's going to do, but if he does return to college basketball, which many people believe he will be doing, uh, he will be playing his Oregon. Uh, he will be, he will be finishing out his career with Dana Altman and the Oregon ducks. And this is a significant verbal commitment for the ducks uh, he comes in and will most likely be Oregon's starting point guard uh, for the foreseeable future. He's got three years of eligibility left. Uh, he's played two. He has started 45 games for the Oklahoma Sooners uh, over the last two years. He's played over 50 games total in his career for the Oklahoma Sooners. And how does he have three years of eligibility left by after already playing two? Well, the NCAA has announced that uh, they will basically give everybody a free year from the 2020-2021 basketball season. It's all sports. Uh, all sports are encompassed in that, in that waiver. But from a basketball perspective, even though he was a sophomore in 2020-21, he goes into the 2021-2022 season uh, yet again as a sophomore, giving him three years of eligibility left. Now, likelihood of, uh, of him playing all three years at Oregon, probably not high because this is, this is an NBA player. This is a guy that's generated a ton of NBA interest right now. He's going through the draft process. He's preparing for NBA workouts, get feedback, see what he needs to work on. More than likely, uh, he will be back in Eugene uh, to better prepare himself. It could be a deal where Davion Harmon's in Oregon for, or in Eugene for just one year. Uh, maybe potentially two um, for, for the Ducks. Uh, and this is a big get for, for Oregon. He started, like I said, 45 games uh, with the Sooners this past season uh, as a sophomore for Oklahoma, a team that made the NCAA tournament, went to the second round of the NCAA tournament uh, before falling out to uh, Gonzaga uh, in that second round game. Uh, I believe the Sooners were an eight seed. Uh, Harmon averaged 12.9 points per game, 3.4 rebounds, 2.1 assists per game. Also a very good defender at the point guard position. Averaged just over a steal a game. And then offensively shot 47% from the field, made 33% of his three-point shots uh, this past season. And in 2019-2020, in uh, Devian Harmon played basically point guard for the Sooners. And then this past season, the, the most recent one, he moved to the off-ball role, played shooting guard while also playing point guard. Uh, but his natural fit is as a point guard, and that's kind of where he's, he's expected to play once he gets to Eugene. That will help Will Richardson, Oregon's junior uh, starting point guard this past season. They'll probably share duties, bringing the ball up. If, if you're familiar with Oregon basketball and what Dan Altman has done in his time at, at, at Oregon, he loves to have two guys on the floor at one time that can handle the ball. And ideally, he'd like it to be three. I mean, think of Oregon's best teams uh, and, and kind of what they could do and how, how good they were. Uh, go back to the Elite Eight team of 2015, 2006, uh, 14, 15, excuse me. That team had Casey Benson, who led the country in assist to turnover ratio. That team also had uh, Tyler Dorsey who handled, helped bring up the ball for Oregon. Flash forward to it, the next year when Oregon made the Final Four, Peyton Pritchard, Casey Benson were on the team still. Tyler Dorsey was on the team. Dylan Ennis was a guy that also handled the basketball. This past season, Oregon was so good uh, at, at being able to, you know, get to the Sweet 16 and be one of the best teams in college basketball. It's because they had multiple guys who could bring the ball up. Will Richardson, Chris Duarte, uh, even Eugene Amarui, uh, uh, LJ Figueroa, you know, those types of guys could bring the ball up for Oregon. And that's kind of what Dan Altman's looking at 
for this roster is he wants to pair someone with Will Richardson to help handle handle the, the point guard duties. And Davion Harmon will fulfill that role. And if, if you're looking for a player comp uh, from previous players at Oregon, uh, I, I, I like to look back at, at Dylan Ennis. And I see a lot of that in Davion Harmon, probably a better version of Dylan Ennis. Um, when, when you look at Davion Harmon's game, six foot two, you know, Ennis was right around there. Harmon's a tenacious defensive player, really long wingspan, similar to, to what Dylan Ennis had. Uh, really good ball handler, really good point guard, can distribute the ball, can really set up Will Richardson now to be that prolific scorer that we know he, he can be and has been uh, for the Oregon Ducks. Was a top 50 recruit coming out of high school, um, coming out of Denton, Texas, uh, in, 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 the Texas, in the state of Texas and a guy that was part of the 2019 class. I think he was the fifth best point guard in the country in that, in that recruiting class in 2019. Um, so this is a big time player and he committed to Oklahoma as part of that 2019 class to new Oregon assistant coach, Chris Crutchfield. So if you're looking for a connection, how did Oregon get in here? Well, Oregon hired recently the assistant coach, Chris Crutchfield, uh, a guy that's got a, a long-standing reputation of being a very good recruiter, very good player in developing guards, very good uh, on-bench coach, a guy that's got a very strong resume, spent eight years at Oklahoma, uh, a couple of those being the associate head coach under Lon Kruger, went to Arkansas for one season uh, as the associate head coach there, and then jumped to East Central University where he was the head coach at D2 school uh, that had two of his sons on the team and now comes to Eugene uh, to replace Tony Stubblefield as an assistant coach for the Ducks. And uh, this is his first big commitment at, at Oregon as an assistant coach. And it comes from a familiar name and someone that's highly regarded and viewed by multiple NBA scouts as a potential NBA guy. Someone that's got probably first round potential, but would, to get there probably needs to come back to Oregon for the 2021-2022 season. Now, what does Oregon's lineup look like right now with Devian Harmon in the mix? Uh, it's pretty simple because there's eight guys on roster um, that are on scholarship right now. We've already mentioned senior Will Richardson. Uh, you imagine Harmon is the point guard, Richardson is the shooting guard. But if you're familiar with Oregon, uh, it's positionless basketball. We'll just call them guards. So at guard, you've got Harmon, you've, you've got Richardson as another wing player. You've got returning starter Eric Williams, Jr., who will be hit, entering his senior season for the Ducks, a tremendous player who can play inside and out, give Oregon a lot of versatility. Uh, and then they've got a bunch of big guys. And it's going to be a combination kind of who fits where and uh, from a, a, a current roster construction. They've got eight guys on scholarship. They've got half that group are, are big guys, more than half that group, I should say. Uh, and Fale Dante, a five-star center, will be back after suffering an injury early on in the 2019-2020, excuse me, 2020-2021 season. Uh, Frank Kepnog, a freshman borderline five-star guy this past season. Uh, Dan Altman said he needed to play Frank a, a lot more than he did uh, down the end of the, of the season stretch. He will be in the mix and probably the odds on favorite to be the opening day starter for Oregon. 6'11", big guy. And then at, at power forward uh, or forward, if you will, uh, it, it could be in Folly Dante, but more than likely right now, how the roster is constructed, uh, five-star incoming freshman Nathan Biddle will probably man that position. Uh, Oregon power forward Luke Wurr is also on the roster. He will be a redshirt sophomore next year. Or excuse me, redshirt freshman because he gets that extra year of eligibility. And then Isaac Johnson, a former top 100 recruit, actually top 70 recruit uh, in the 2019 recruiting class. He took a... a Religious mission for two years will be joining the team. Seven footer can shoot threes, very similar, you know, game to, to Nathan Biddle could allow Oregon basically to play Biddle and Johnson together if they wanted to one at center, one at power forward, but likelihood for, from as Oregon's roster is currently constructed. I would think it's Devion Harmon. It's Will Richardson. It's Eric Williams. It's Nathan Biddle. And then it's also going to be Frank Kepnock. So a lot of size two six eleven 11 guys, Two guys that are in that 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, range, and then Devion Harmon, who's at 6'2", will be running the point for the Ducks. And now, what does Oregon need to do next? Who, who do they need to target next? What players could they be landing? Uh, go to the link up above. I've, I've dropped this in the description. 
of some targets that Oregon's going to. It's at duckterritory.com. It's a VIP story. Make sure you're a subscriber to duckterritory.com to read that. But some names that they could be going after. Uh, Jacob Young is a combo guard from Rutgers. He is the younger brother of former Oregon Duck and former Pac-12 player of the year, Joe Young. Jacob Young is, is a senior grad transfer prospect from Rutgers, had a career year, averaged 14 points a game for the Scarlet Knights, who made the NCAA tournament, made it to the second round, and almost knocked off Houston, who made the final four. Um, buzzer beater type of, a, of an outcome in that game, uh, or lack thereof of a buzzer beater, is what had Houston prevail. Other names to, to, to look at. There's a junior college transfer that Oregon is looking at, Rivaldo Sorez. Uh, it got leaked out by some social media accounts earlier this past week that the entire Oregon basketball staff was on a Zoom call with Rivaldo Sorez uh, prior to his departure to Kansas for the National Junior College Association's tournament, their, their version of March Madness. And Rivaldo Sorez is the best player on what has been basically the best team in junior college this season. They were upset in the tournament, but they spent almost a majority of this season at the junior college level ranked as the number one team at that level. Uh, and Rivaldo Sorez is their best player. 14 points a game, 6'6 six, six guard, can really shoot the ball, a really good defender as well, can rebound the basketball. Those are two names to pay attention to. And, and look, Oregon is going to be heavily involved in the transfer portal. They are going to try and sign multiple players to this class. Don't be surprised. They've got five more spots left. Don't be surprised if they go out and they find four, maybe even five players to add to this roster to get themselves ready for a run at will be what could be their third straight regular season Pac-12 championship. But for now, Devion Harmon is your next Oregon Duck. He's coming into the program, will be a big get for Dan Altman, instantly becomes one of the best guards in the Pac-12. And once again, the, uh, the Ducks under Dan Altman's tutelage and leadership have reloaded at the guard position and we'll see what happens next moving forward with who else they add. Until we talk to you then, thanks for watching. I'm Matt Prane of DuckTerritory.com.